Obviously, strange ways as well. I think the population was 900, but they had nearly 1,700 in the no, prison. No, the population at the time when he kicked off, it was um, 1,600. He was 64, 68 prisoners. And it was only designed for 900 prisoners. Yeah, that's crazy. See, when you started the riot, was there a massive plan for that, or did it just happen? No, no. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, it, it, it was sort of like pre-planned to a degree the week leading up to it, you know, but I didn't think nobody expected going for the length of time it did. The biggest in British history. That that that's the thing that stunned everybody. And it went global. The whole world knew about yes. it. Yes. Um and but the reason why it went on that length of time because of the poll tax riots. And I firmly believe that. Because when I was being interviewed, I remember turning around to them and said, Let me tell you something, right? You deliberately let this right continue. And they all went, what do you mean? I said, what happened the previous evening down London? And they're all scratching their heads thinking, what's he on about? I said, the poll tax riots, Trafalgar Square. And I said, just by coincidence that the following morning, one of the biggest prisons in this country kicks off, just by coincidence. So all the attraction, all the limelight went from that to that. I said, because which is more containable, a riot behind walls or a riot on the streets. So when that happened in the chapel, when the, the riot first started, how many people were in it? Um, I can't give you, you a specific number. I can guess, I'd say around about, about 300 prisoners. Was the beast in there as well? No, no. Now every Sunday, the beast used to go to that chapel on the right-hand side at the top, mainly from um, C-Wing and E-Wing. But on this particular day, he wasn't in attendance. Now, from reading the depositions, I came across a notification that, from a grass, that to the ward is like, we're going to kick off in the chapel. So someone stuck you in? Well, didn't stick us in, but, but informed that something's going to happen in the chapel. It's going to kick off. So what's happened? The warders have gone to the sex offence and said, you're not going to chapel today. You know, we can't go because it's going to be trouble. Some of the sex fans saying, I want to go to the chapel and saying, well, you're not going. But what they done, the ones on C-Wing, right, as soon as it kicked off in the chapel, they got rid of them, got them out of the building immediately. But the ones on the E-Wing on the, on the falls... How many of them was there? <clears throat> the ones on E-Wing were about 54 or 56, they were. The scary thing is, if they kept in there, they'd probably all been dead. They were kept in, the ones on E-Wing. Oh, E-Wing? Yeah, E-Wing. So the ones that were in the chapel got out... Right. No, they, they weren't in attendance. Right, because they were confined behind gave, the cells. Yeah, the ones on Sea Wing, no sex offenders went to the chapel. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let me get this straight. No sex offenders were in attendance because of the, 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 the warning that they had Sunday from the grass. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So the ones on Sea Wing, as soon as it kicked off in the chapel, they got rid of them out the, the building. The back door. But the ones on E Wing, they left them. Now, I feel really left them to the fate. Not that I'm bothered. The sex offenders. So as a result, when it kicked off and they got the keys and doors were being opened, the sex offenders and evil were all being battered, the cell doors were being wrenched off, whatever, you know, and items were taking place, retribution for the crimes they were in for. You know, um, not that I feel sorry. Was you know, two people lost their lives during this Right, riot? two people lost their lives, right? Was that sex offenders? Right, one was a sex offender called Derek White. Um, multiple, multiple forms of, um, how can I put it, rape against children. Now, the reason why I say that, because I had access to their um, antecedents, all of them, because I wanted all of them, they're all, giving, they're all giving evidence here, I wanted all of them all, right? So it wasn't a pretty thing. So the Jews have everybody's files and... Yeah, uh -huh. basically the files, but the police have an antecedent on you. So if I'm a solicitor, I ask for it and it'll give me a rundown of what you've been in prison, what right. you've been um, charged with the throughout the years. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And multiple times it went on and it went on and went on the list, you know. Um, so we got a good hiding as a result of what he was in prison for now. Um, I didn't touch no sex offender. I wasn't interested in them, you know. Unfortunately, I was charged with his death. You charged with another murder? I was charged with his death, uh -huh. that Derek White sex yeah. offender. He, char he died with, um, from natural causes, from a blood clot behind his left knee. Um, but he did get a good hiding. But 
it was another prisoner that accused me attacking him, saying that they see me attacking him, and took his eye out, his eyes were in and all that. So that's how much bullshit was going on. Um, but luckily for me, a QC did a further autopsy on him, independent autopsy, and found the blood clot that killed him. And that's how he died, and all charges were dismissed. The other person that died was a screw, but he died from an actual cause of heart, heart attack. Through you know? the riots? Yeah. You know, uh, not because of anybody, anybody third hand, just a natural cause of heart attack. See, because of the beatings the screws put out in you, see if they did die by getting a beating from the cons, would they have mattered? Um, more revenge, more, obviously. From the screws? Yeah. If they, I, I knew that the screws, eventually when the lads were going out, my vents got up, my, myself got apprehended that they couldn't go over the top with the beatings. Because it had now it'd been gone on that many days, it was under the microscope. Because it changed the whole system you done. Absolutely. You, you were the main negotiator. You yes. had to go and negotiate stuff. When did you start realising how big it got? How many days into the... From the onset. From straight away? From the onset, because obviously we took discussion had taken place conservatively. Mm -hmm. Um um, it was about the disconsent within the prison system, strange ways, but the prison system on the whole, you know, um, and that the message, has, the message has to be put out that this type of behaviour, these type of conditions cannot continue, you know, not in this day and age. What were you negotiating the first time you went down? Um, basically, it was about, it was, well, the first time we went down, our concerns was about prisoners, you know, if prisoners are going to come out willingly, which they have the entitlement to do so, and that they're not going to be touched. We want that um, security and assurity, right? Or surety, I should say, for somebody else, because somebody yeah. criticised me about using the word assurity, <laughs> but they got it wrong. <laughs> um, that was our main concerns. Although, although the undercurrent was about the rights of conditions, screws behaviour, etc. Their concerns was about, about the YPs, the young prisoners. Now, I understand that because there were young lads just caught up in it, hyped up in it, egos, you know. Story to tell their friends yeah, when they get out. Precisely. Eventually, when it all quells down, if they're still there, reality might sit in for some of them. They think, bloody hell, I want to go now. Especially people, was it all LTPs? Was it all long-term prisoners? Or was there people doing one year, two year? It was put, a mixture. So people could have potentially got more onto their sentence? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. How were you feeling going down for the first time to negotiate? You're not thinking, oh, they're going to fucking jump me here? Yeah, of course it did. So why did you, why? Was that again you? Right, right. Uh, uh, again, you got, you got to understand, sorry. You got to understand that it's an incident, right? And in any given incident, you got to have negotiations. And the reason why I say that, because if, if nobody went down to negotiate and they, and they all just got fobbed off, it would have been for nothing. The press would have had a field day. Look at these idiots. They don't even know why they're writing. They're just writing for the namesake. And I didn't want to distract from the point that it was about the conditions, the inhumane conditions and the injustice of how people are treated. This is what it was about. Um... And how can I put it? That was carried forward all the way through by myself, regardless. And as you know, a result of that, that the wolf inquiry came into play right near the end. Mm -hmm. um, and hence, it, it, it did radicalise the old system for the better. So once you were doing the riots, the police, they cut off all electricity? Yeah, everything. What, they were playing music outside? Yeah, outside from the onset. What um, the fuck was all that about? That was to stop people conversing with the press across the way. Or for giving information? Yeah. On South Wall Street, there's warehouses, retail warehouses. Mm -hmm. And um, they were all on top of the roofs there. Um, Mary Monson Solicitors had one of these re retail warehouses, but it was a solicitor's firm, coincidentally, facing um, the old gatehouse. Mm -hmm. So a lot of press was on there. Um, so they didn't want prisoners and press con conversing, exchanging what it was about. So they drowned them out with music, or blaring of the horns, you know, and I, I, I was calling across a couple of times, but it can be a bit heavy on that. So what about, on the yeah, what about <laughs> food then? How was your supplies? Food. Right, let me tell you about food. I mean, there was, plenty, there was plenty of food in the kitchen, tin stuff, plenty. 
For how long do you think that could have lasted for? That could have lasted for quite a while, in actual fact. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when you have all the other stuff like frozen stuff like meat, eggs, etc., things like that, you have to be a bit more precautious with it because mm -hmm, salmonella, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Food poisoning. Yeah, and stuff, it all yeah. comes into play. And, so, and two, one of the lads did get um, salmonella poison on the tenth. You know, seeing him being stretched out, but that's because he opened the tin of corned beef, left it, and then went back to it a couple of days later. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> you know? Um, but we had plenty of supplies there, also from the canteen, what was left, and um, rounded them up. Um, for the first week, I must admit, for the first week, and my first time into that kitchen, I found all the steaks and chops. And I'm talking about <sighs> multiple tubes of meat. Meat I've never seen in my life, but meat that we don't get while you're in there. And that's all I lived on, plus other lads for the full week, steak and chops, you know. Um, <laughs> and I loved it. <laughs> Obviously, when you did the riots, because they had put you through the racial abuse, racial abuse, the physical abuse, to take over a prison, that is the worst thing you can do to the governor, to the, the screws. For you, how were you feeling as if to say, fuck you, two's up, I've eventually won this fight? Yeah, of course. I mean, you do get... You do get a buzz about it, yeah. you know, because to put it in its context, all them prisoners from the onset, it must have been a vestige of freedom because you had pent up frustration, that anger, that annoyance being locked in your cell all day. You know, all you're seeing is <clears throat> locks, bolts, bars and mortar. That's all you're seeing. Now you, now you can go anywhere you want in the building, you can go on the roof, see the world. <laughs> you know, yeah. So that that it's like letting a, it's like letting our little dog out into the back garden. There, he loves it. Oh yeah, that's what we're like. Um, but that was short lived because it still comes down to what's it about. You know, you can you can you can frolic about much as you want, but you can't distract from what the incident's oh, yeah. about. You need an end product. Yeah, which is and to, the to thing create that, change. Yeah, the thing that I found sad about it on the first day and the second day, I'm talking about the evening, is that, you know, the canteen had been raided, you know, the, the, the healthcare medical um, center on the wing where they distributed medication had been raided, you know. Um, People fill a methadone and sleeping tablets. And oh, I don't know what, don't, yeah. all sorts. Um, but the thing, that, the thing that astounded me and sort of like irated me, irated me was that the lads in the evening were throwing all the, all the, all the stuff from the canteen, which they felt they didn't want, over the landing. And I thought, what are you doing? Yeah, you need this supplies. is stuff you don't even get now. Yeah. You now you, you now you're disregarding it. As used to say, I don't need that now. So that's why, hence me, a couple, hence myself and a couple of others went to the canteen and rounded the rest of the stock and went, no, we need this. So when did you start getting your add-ons in for sentences? Was that, did you get, ever get an extra sentence for the riot? I, I got 10 years. Did they throw 10 years under 10 that? years I got, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and the reason why I say 10 years, right, is because up until that point, you know, nobody been done for riot. Throughout history, you look at history, you have to be done collectively. Um, but nobody has. And it was being portrayed in the papers that... Um, by the POA members that these 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 um, fellows should get ten years. Did it not say there was twenty body bags went in straight away the first day they thought there no, was twenty deaths? Not nonsense. Nonsense. I mean couples were quite angry about that because that was portrayed by the the, the, the press, the mainstream press, and that was far from the truth. Because you made it clear you never threw any bricks, you never set anything on fire, you no, never harmed anybody. Yeah. So why did thing, you get the biggest one of the biggest the only, senses? The only thing I done which I can hold my hands up to, believe it or not, was knocking the uh, main partition wall down on the roof. Uh -huh. You know, with the, um, a mullet hammer. I was knocking it down. And the reason why I knocked that down so I could walk up and down it for safety purposes. Um, and that was my reason. But as for throwing any missile, no. I wasn't foolish enough to do that because I know the minute I'd done that, they got me. Even though they got me anyway, <laughs> but they got me more yeah. so now because mm -hmm. it would have been classified as a, 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 a lethal weapon. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I'm being a life sentence prisoner. Uh, that has repercussions, serious repercussions. So how did you get caught then once the riots were coming to an right, end? Right, um, I got apprehended, right? And, you know, my own fault, I became complacent. And what happened, as the days are going on, I went down on several occasions to negotiate with um, POA members. And um, on this particular day, the sun come out. <clears throat> so I was just soaking up the sun, the rays. And it was John Joe. He poked his head up and he said, Alan, do you want to talk to you downstairs? Well, I said, okay, I'll be down in a minute. But I didn't want to go down. But I thought, well, I have to go down. Um, <clears throat> so as I'm going work, working my way down, he clearly shouts, be careful, lad, because I don't fucking trust him. So I've climbed all the way down because everything was a wreck inside. I mean, it was all bits in jail, so all the staircases, etc., were made of cast iron, all gone, all smashed. So I've jumped down onto E-Wing, the bottom, and the old hospital complex was under the spiral staircase. I've gone to the gate, and there was two warders from there. One was called Tate, and one was called Jones. Tate was from Hull, Jones was from Manchester. Um, we did a little exchange, and then all of a sudden, he did something with his body. Momentarily, and I, but I clocked it and I thought, oh. And as I backed away from the gate, all the cell doors, all the way, the full length of the landing, even behind me, opened and all the right squads come out. So I know my way back up was, gone. yeah, it's gone, no chance. Did you not notice that going down the way? No, my thought, the reason why I said that, I became complacent because when I've dropped down, <clears throat> Upon reflection, I should have seen that all the debris on the landing had been moved away, and I didn't. Bastards. If I'd have seen that, there's no way I'd have come down. Uh -huh. I would have went, no. But it's obviously, they went on a month. Were you probably glad at the end that it's kind of come, it came to a head? How long do you think it could have went on for? Um, well, to be perfectly honest, right, and a lot of people are aware of this, that during the times I negotiated with the POA members, they used to ask me when I'm coming out, from the onset. And I clearly stated, I'm not coming out, you're gonna to have to come in and get me. They always let me back in. Why is that? Um, think I think it may be based on the fact that they had to have somebody that they could negotiate with. Fairly. On good faith, yeah. Um, somebody who was a bit more sensible in that respect. Not, not like hot-headed. Um, and I also firmly believe that <clears throat> if they would have nabbed me from the onset, then that would have given Kicked the clear off. evidence to others that we're not going to negotiate with yeah. use. That's more, more of a danger, more of a risk. Of course. Yeah. But let's not kid ourselves. Even though we're negotiating, we're still at loggerheads with each other. I don't trust you and you don't trust me in reality. Yeah. You know, but somewhere along the line, we, we have to show faith. Mm -hmm but it's, it's based on falseness. Yeah.